In the last tutorial, I spent some time talking about setting up RoboPort networks, how the bots work, and what the different types of chests do. During that, I mentioned that you can copy and paste chunks of your factory, and the bots will fly out to build it. These copied chunks are called blueprints, and there's a lot more to them than just being part of copy and paste. Let's take a closer look at them. Welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio, now updated for 2.0. Creating a blueprint is easy. Press Ctrl C and select a chunk of your factory to copy it, and then place this copy in your inventory. Congratulations, you've made a blueprint. These can be selected later and placed wherever you want. However, if you hold down Shift when you drag for the copy action, you'll see a blue outline on the selection, and when you release, you'll get a lot more options for your blueprint. You can choose some icons to be shown on the thumbnail, give it a name, add a description to remind you later what on earth it's for, and much more besides. Let's take a look at the options, starting off with the nice simple ones that I use most frequently, the filters. These are at the bottom of the list on the left, and allow you to select or deselect various categories of items all at once. Entities are the normal buildings, things like assembly machines, pumps, rail, stations, and so on. This is the default, and what you'll get if you don't hold shift when you copy. Tiles are any flooring that you've laid, such as stone bricks or concrete, or even landfill or space platform floor. Copying train stop names means that when you drop the new blueprint in, the new station will have the same name as the one you copied, rather than a random name, and so it may already have trains configured to go to it. This can be very useful if you're setting up a new station that is to have identical settings, perhaps for a mine, but can be dangerous if you copied an iron mine and are placing a copper mine. Note that if you just copy without going via the blueprint window, the station name will also be copied as if this box was ticked. Trains and vehicle fuel allows you to make the bots place a fully programmed train and fuel it up so it's ready to depart. Yes, copying a train copies its schedule as well. If you right click on anything in the blueprint, it will turn into a ghost. This has removed it from the blueprint, but until you save, you can undo this by left clicking on the blued out item. Getting rid of tiles under an entity is difficult though. Above the filters in the left panel, you can see a list of all the components in the blueprint. This is a useful reference if you're trying to get rid of all the pylons or roboports from an area you've copied, especially as you can right click on these to remove all instances of that component from the blueprint. Again, left clicking will put them all back, including any you'd previously removed manually. Next, let's take a look at the buttons at the top. The green arrow can be used to upgrade items in the blueprint. When clicked, this will show any upgrade planners in your inventory or in your blueprint books, allowing you to select which one you want. If you pick the default blank one, this will upgrade everything that can be upgraded – belts, assembly machines and inserters. The others will work as programmed. Note that you can right click on an upgrade planner to run it in reverse, downgrading all the items. The middle button at the top allows you to configure your blueprint to have some settings parameterized. This is an advanced option which allows you to configure a blueprint when it's paced. It's a bit beyond a beginner tutorial like this one, but I shall make another video in the future talking about it and showing some examples. The arrow button allows you to export your blueprint as a text string. This can be saved outside Factorio in a text document, sent to a friend, uploaded to the internet, whatever you want. There's a matching import string button on the toolbar which can be used to import these strings back into Factorio as well, creating a new blueprint. Personally, I don't like importing other people's blueprints, but it can be a good way to learn. And finally, we have the Snap to Grid options, which I'll come back to in a couple of minutes. Hit the Create Blueprint button, and you'll have a shiny new blueprint in your hand ready to use. As before, you can drop it into your inventory as a temporary place to keep it, and from there, if you right-click on it, you can reopen the blueprint interface to edit it or delete it. This interface is very nearly the same as the one for creating the blueprint, but there are a few extra buttons at the top. The blue one allows you to select the blueprint contents again, overwriting what you had before. Next, the grey plus allows you to create a copy of the blueprint, perhaps to modify it into a slightly different version of it. Finally, the red bin will delete the blueprint from your inventory. If you're a bit careless with blueprints like I am, you can end up with some of them in your inventory by mistake, and this is how to get rid of them. If you make any changes other than deleting, use the save button in the bottom right. Now, let's actually use one of these blueprints. To place a blueprint, simply take it in your hand and click somewhere in the world. The blueprint will be placed as ghosts and construction bots will fly out to place all the components, as we saw in the previous video. 
As with simple copy and paste, you can rotate your blueprints with R or Shift R, and you can flip them with H or V for horizontal or vertical flips. You can't flip blueprints that contain railway components, however as of Factorio 2.0, you can flip buildings that handle fluids. If you place a blueprint or anything else in the wrong place, you can use Ctrl-Z to undo whatever you just did, and if you change your mind again and realise you did want to do that, you can redo by pressing Ctrl-Shift-Z or Ctrl-Y. If you try to undo something that you did more than a minute ago, a confirmation box will appear just to make sure that you really wanted to do that, and it even shows you a neat preview window of what you'll be undoing. There are different levels of overwrite available for placing blueprints. If you just click, then if there's anything in the way, the blueprint won't place and you'll see an error. If you hold shift, you can force place to mark any bits of nature in the way, such as trees and rocks and cliffs for deconstruction, and also to mark water for landfill, and the bots will deal with these as well. If landfill is required, this will be placed first, and then the buildings on top of it will also be placed with a single instruction. With a force place, other bits of factory in the way won't be removed. The game will place all entities that can be placed, but won't overwrite any placed entities which are already there. However, entities will be reprogrammed. If you have an assembler set up to build yellow belts, and you paste an assembler that's programmed to build red belts over the top of it, it will update the assembler's recipe. The third level of overwrite is Super Force Build, which you can activate by holding down Control and Shift when you place a blueprint. This will overwrite absolutely anything under the blueprint, including removing other buildings if necessary. You can tell if you've done this correctly because this little angry ghost will appear. It is somewhat intelligent, however, and will take any belts it can underground. However, I'm afraid it won't do the same for pipes. This system is very useful, especially for placing small entities like inserters. However, it's important to check carefully that everything has ended up as you expected. It's very easy for a rogue piece of belt to remain, or for a pipe to be broken. Now that we've looked into placing blueprints, let's go back and look at snapping blueprints to a grid. For this example, I'm going to place two large pylons at the maximum distance apart, and from here I'd like to create a grid of pylons at this distance so that I know I've got full electrical coverage. I could do this manually, holding the mouse button and dragging and then running along, and the game will automatically place them, which is great for a single line, but not so much for a grid. I could then copy and paste a chunk of this line a bit lower. This will work, although it's a little fiddly to line it up properly. Once I've got a few of these lines placed, I could then copy those and place another row by lining them up with existing ones. I could even save this as a blueprint, and this works quite well. You know, for occasional use, it can be quicker than making a proper blueprint. But with snapping, we can make it much better and much more powerful. Let's undo all of that and try again. This time, I'll shift copy my single pylon and select Snap to Grid. I want the grid to be 32 by 32 to match the range of the pylon, set it to absolute, and then leave the other two numbers alone. The grid size sets how often the blueprint repeats, and the position allows you to adjust where in the grid square your specified entities are placed. You can adjust the grid position by typing numbers in the boxes, but it's much easier to hold shift and just drag the green box around in the preview. An absolute grid means that the blueprints are always placed on the same grid pattern relative to the world, and you can adjust the offset of this with the two coordinates. Relative means that you can choose exactly where the first one goes, but if you then just drag, you can place additional blueprints at the same offset, and I'll demonstrate this in a moment. I find absolute is generally a lot more useful for infrastructure like rails and pylons, but relative can be useful for chunks of factory. Traditionally, many people try to set this sort of grid to be chunk aligned, that is, matched up with Factorio's internal 32x32 32 32 grid. This can be done by setting the grid size to 32x32 32 32 and making sure that whatever you're blueprinting is the right size to fit in that. Pressing F5 will turn on a debug view showing you the grid and allowing you to line up directly to it, and a lot of other information as well. Now that I've set this up, I can save the blueprint and drag it across the landscape to create a perfect grid of pylons, and when I come to expand the factory later, as long as I've kept the blueprint, I can just add more to it and they'll all be perfectly lined up. This is a very simple example, but you can add more elements to these grids as well. I usually include a roboport with each pylon. It does put the roboports slightly closer together than they need to be, but it's very, very easy to drop them all in like that, and you know they'll all be powered because they're right next to a large pylon. This system really comes into its own for consistent rail systems, however, especially if you want to build a city block design. I like to create a blueprint with a pylon and roboport in the middle, and straight rail with a pair of signals going past one above, one below. Make sure the pylon is in the centre, copy and rotate the blueprint to check. 
I'll then create an additional one with a roundabout, either single chunk for simplicity or multi chunk for throughput. And from there, building out a rail network is just a case of stamping down the blueprints across the map and then letting the bots sort it all out for you. The best thing about this is that you can build your rails wherever you want and know that they will always line up perfectly when they meet. In 2.0, Roboports also have a built in radar, so you don't need to worry about placing radars with your blueprints. You can click with the blueprint outside your radar area and the blueprint will be placed, but it won't show up until the radar coverage is refreshed for that area or you build Roboport or radar coverage out into that area. Relative blueprints work very nicely for mining arrays. Here I've set up six drills around a single pylon, a nice compact mine setup. If I copy this with shift held down, select snapped grid and relative, you can see that the blueprint is free to be placed anywhere I want, unlike the one with absolute snapping. However, as soon as I place the first one, as long as I hold the mouse button down, any further copies will snap into position, making it very easy to cover this ore patch with mining drills in a perfect pattern. This can also be used for arrays of assemblers or other machines. Tangentially related to blueprints are deconstruction planners and upgrade planners, which I'm trying to resist calling red prints and green prints. These can be accessed from their buttons on your toolbar, or with the keyboard shortcuts, which by default are Alt-D and Alt-U respectively. At their simplest, you can drag them across the world and mark any entity under them for deconstruction or for an appropriate upgrade, and as ever, your dedicated and hard-working bots will fly out to make your wishes come true. For both of these, and for the copy tool, when you're dragging across the landscape, you can press Q to cancel the current planner. This is handy if you realise you started dragging in the wrong place, or you change your mind about an upgrade, or if you're just using the planner to count entities. With the two planners, you can shift drag to cancel upgrades or deconstructions in the area you selected. This can be handy if you realise you selected more than you wanted to, but you've made some other changes since, or if enough of it is correct that you don't want to undo. Finally, with the upgrade planner, if you right click and drag, it will run in reverse, downgrading the entities underneath it. The most powerful part of these planners, however, is that they can be customised. Drop a deconstruction planner into your hotbar and then right click on it. From here, you can choose to whitelist, that is to only deconstruct the items you specify, or blacklist, which means deconstruct everything except the items you specified. Item filters can be set by clicking on the squares or by bringing items over from your inventory. Alternatively, you can use the Trees and Rocks Only option at the top if you just want to tidy up the nature in an area, or with Blacklist if you want to leave the natural world alone and just remove your factory. The Deconstruction Planner has two tabs. Floor tiles must be done in the second tab, and you can select when the game sets tiles for deconstruction. Always and never are pretty self-explanatory. Only means that it won't select entities, just tiles, and normal means that it will only select tiles if there's no entities in the selection area. Note that the Entities Picker has a few options which you won't be used to. You can specify environment items, such as fish, cliffs, or specific tree and rock types, and you can also select from Unsorted, which includes things like ghosts, requests, and items on the ground. Um, pay no attention to the final purple tab here. Uh, this is because I have cheats running to make video production easier. The Upgrade Planner can be configured in a similar way. Right-click on it and it opens a new window. In here, you can choose what items will be upgraded, from what to what. When you select the first item, you'll see all items the upgrade planner can work on, but after you pick one and click on the other side of conversion, you'll only see compatible upgrades, so no, you can't upgrade belts into chests. Yes, you can use the upgrade planner to downgrade as well, if you want, by selecting the higher tier item in the first slot and a lower tier item in the second slot. If you have the quality mod active, you'll see basically all items as possibilities for upgrade, but in many cases you'll only be able to adjust the quality level. You can't turn a train station into anything else. There are a couple of less obvious uses for the upgrade planner. It can also be used to add, remove or replace modules in buildings, with this icon here meaning empty module slot. And if you select a module, you'll get an option at the bottom to choose which type of building this will affect. Leave it blank if you want it to work on all buildings. When you select the module type to upgrade to, you can also choose the maximum number of this module to insert. Finally, you can also select fuel types, however this only works when applied to blueprints. You can't swap out the coal in an existing train for rocket fuel. Currently, all of your red, green and blue prints are just sitting in your hotbar or inventory, taking up valuable space that could be used for iron plates. Fortunately, there's somewhere else we can stick them. Press B to open the blueprint manager. Any of your blueprints or planners can be dropped in here, and when you put one in the final slot, a new row will be created, so you won't ever run out of space. 
Using blueprints from here is as easy as clicking on them and then using them in the world as normal. When you've finished with it, press Q to dismiss it. Don't put it in your inventory or hotbar, as that will take it out of the Blueprint Manager. You'll see that there are two tabs at the top of the window. These allow you to have personal blueprints which only you can see but will show up in any game you play, and shared ones that will be visible to anyone who's in the current game. This is great for multiplayer when you have some standard designs for things like stations. You can save them into the game blueprints and anyone will be able to use them. This system works well, at least until you have too many blueprints and the interface becomes overfull and cluttered. Fortunately, there's a system for creating books of blueprints, which are essentially folders that you can sort your blueprints into. If you click the blueprint book on the toolbar to create a new book, and if, like me, you've hidden that button, you can use the three dots button to show all available controls. Then drop this book into your blueprints manager as normal, and then right click on it to open it. From here, you can give it a title and some icons so you can find it again in the future, and then drop blueprints into it just as before. You can even add additional books inside books to give you a tree structure. If you need to remove the blueprints from your hotbar, middle click on them. If you open them and delete them, it may delete them from the blueprints book as well. If you select a book from your blueprint library instead of a blueprint, you'll be shown the first blueprint in the book. You can then scroll through them by holding shift and turning the mouse wheel. And with that, we've come to the end of the tutorial. You now know almost everything there is to know about blueprints and from the previous video about the bots which will build them for you. But I'll leave you with one final blueprint trick. If you're trying to turret creep, it's nice to be able to have the bots put down turrets and then load them with the magazines from your inventory automatically. And you can do this. First, switch over to map mode and find an area outside your RoboPort coverage and place a turret ghost. Click on it to open it and then mouse over the type of ammo you want to use on the left and press Q to select it in hand. Then you can right click in the turret's ammo slot to add a single magazine at a time or left click to add a full stack. I normally put in about 20 so that you don't lose too many if the turret gets destroyed. Now close the window and if you copy this turret you'll see an ammo icon on the ghost in hand. Any turrets you place with this blueprint will have an ammo request when they're placed and if you're building them with your personal roboport they'll get loaded very quickly and be ready to go. I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions put them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'd also be interested to hear any other ideas you have for more areas that need some explanation. Don't forget to subscribe so you see the next tutorial and come along to join in the streams to see these sort of designs being made live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.